Um, hello, I'm Go. Thank you very much for coming. I'm so happy to be able to be here in Manila. This is the first time for me to come to Philippines. Uh, I just arrived yesterday, and I have a time tomorrow to see around this city. So I'm looking forward to see it. Um, today, um, I would talk about my practice. And uh, I titled uh, Bridging Architecture. Architecture is, uh, yeah, basically, it needs to be a sort of shelter which uh, make a kind of a comfortable space for the people to live um, inside. So anyway, uh, architecture needs to make a sort of boundary between uh, inside and the outside, or something uh, space for human beings from the nature, right? Um, but at the same time, I believe architecture has a, a kind of power to make a new bridge which connect uh, between them. I will talk about it in uh, various level. Uh, at first, um, I will talk about the bridging, uh, four kinds of bridging today. Uh, first bridge is, uh, uh, maybe it, this is related to the history and the culture in Japan. Uh, bridging between inside and outside uh, for maybe also for you in Asia, uh, inside and outside is more ambiguous compared with uh, Europe, right? Uh, it's more continuous and, uh, for example, especially in Japan, the sliding door, uh, we call it Fusuma or Hikido. Uh, when you open, our space is con totally open to the outside. It's one, one uh, environment. Uh, which connect the inside and the outside. So I think it's related to the, our culture. But uh, let's say I would like to um, develop this idea in uh, contemporary architecture. Uh, first project is a weekend house in the forest, uh, three hours by car from Tokyo. Uh, I call the pilot in the forest. Uh, this area is very, very, um, they have a rain in uh, June and dry in the rainy season. So uh, most of the building, weekend house has a pilotis, a sort of a pilotis. We call it a takayuka in Japanese. One meter higher from the ground or sometimes 1.5 meter, uh, which uh, would have a um, um, distance from the humidity on the ground. And they use it uh, underneath for the space for machine or space for sometimes car, uh, somehow. But uh, okay, let's start from this uh, common language in this area, this uh, purities. Okay, I would use this uh, common language of this area, but uh, in a new way. So after the study, after the examination, this is uh, my proposal. Let's make a very, very, very high purities in the forest. It's uh, uh, 6.5 meters high. It's almost like a three or some. Uh, 3.5 meters uh, stories of the normal building, and uh, small room above the tree. This is a plan. Uh, ground floor is just a semi-outdoor space. I call it the piazza, piazza in the forest. So in this piazza, the, my client, human, small animals, and the plants uh, share this environment. And uh, Underneath, uh, no, 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 uh, above the second floor, it's an uh, uh, intimate space like a uh, dining kitchen, bathroom, and the uh, bedroom. Uh, this is a detailed section, 6.5 meters high PLT space, and uh, very, very um, intimate space above. Uh, so this weekend house, let's say, is floating in the forest, but the point is not only floating, but also I try to make a new kind of space, let's say, uh, in between um, artificial and the nature. This is a picture which you, you can recognize it. Uh, for me, this proportion, um, you will see, in my practice, the proportion and the scale is a point in uh, every project. And uh, this I explained already four times. 6.5 meters is a uh, key in this project. So I develop my practice all the time in, uh, in the model, physical model, and I compare with the various proportion. And uh, after the trial, I notice, huh, 
this uh, 5.5 meters is a kind of a in between uh, relationship between uh, uh, building and nature. So when I check the six meter, I noticed how huh, this space is very defined by the architecture above. And the seven meter, I noticed, ah, this space start to melting in the forest, right? So this 5.5 is a uh, kind of a new proportion which make a relationship between this uh, environment of the uh, building and the existing forest. So let's say for me, uh, this space is made from the uh, concrete floor and the uh, timber ceiling and the natural green, which is um, was exist in a, in a existing uh, uh, nature of the forest. So it's half nature, half architecture. So when on the daytime you spend that time in this PLT space, uh, you climb up to the upper upper floor like a monkey just beside the tree. And the upper floor, yeah, you can find this uh, continuous space inside and outside, which is divided by the sliding door. And uh, yeah, as a space, it's very compact, intimate space, but uh, thanks to this big window to the four direction, uh, you can also feel the life floating in the forest. Okay, this is a dining space. Dining space has a glass table, so you can look down to the purity space from the hammock. You can look up to the sky through the dining and the skylight. And uh, maybe you can recognize the experience of the sense of scale of this purity space with this movie. So, yeah, at the daytime, you would the take a time, have a time with your friends in this uh, semi-outdoor space instead of the room. And you have a sleep just beside the tree after dark. So, next project which try to make a new um, bridging between inside and outside is a weekend uh, the, the apartment building. Uh, this client is a super unique person. Uh, he asked me to make uh, two requests. One request is uh, uh, go, please make something uh, uh, different from others. Because uh, already in this street, there's a um, normal apartment, rented apartment, and uh, already empty room uh, you've, he found. OK, maybe it's not a good idea to make a normal type of apartment. That's why he asked me to design something special. Uh, it's nice for architect. And the second request is uh, to make a variation between the um, apartment. This is super unique because uh, uh, he understand this is a place very close to the Shinjuku, the center of Tokyo. So it's nice for the young uh, businessman. But at the same time, there is three uh, university near here. So it's nice to expect uh, the resident who is maybe half is the young uh, businessman and maybe also a student. So in order to have a sort of a, uh, diversity of, between the residents, we, we need to have a variation between the units. I think it's really interesting and smart idea. OK, let's make it. But uh, maybe uh, something new, unique way. Uh, OK, so left hand is very typical to uh, the apartment in Tokyo. Uh, in the north side, you can find a common corridor, small entrance, small bathroom, and a small room, very Tokyo size, like uh, maybe in total uh, 15 square meter. And on the south side, you can find the balcony here. Here. Um, but uh, in reality, this uh, uh, balcony is separated by this partition which can break. Um, when something uh, fire or something happened, because uh, uh, there's a regulation in Japan, we need to keep the uh, two loot for escape. One is from the corridor and one is from the balcony. So this separation wall need to break down when something happened. 
And the second thing is the problem of this balcony is um, there is a machine like this, gigantic machine for the air conditioning, and also machine for uh, photo water or something. So in the end, this uh, balcony of the apartment in Tokyo is not the place for the resident, not the, a space for life, right? It's space for planning for builders or something. So the, it's pity in the end, uh, it's not a good space, so residents start to put the garbage or bicycle or something. So in the end, from the street, you can find the balcony, which is filled with a lot of garbage. It's, it's so sad, right? So already I had this doubt and question, how we can improve the quality of a balcony in Tokyo? And the request from the client, make a variation between the apartment. OK, I got it. Let's make a, instead of such a dead balcony, let's make a tall balcony or long balcony or L-shaped balcony. And uh, I designed the concrete building, which has seven stories, which has uh, uh, 20 units. I developed the project with models in various scales, hundreds of, of models we make in the process, and uh, it's really important in the process. Instead of to have a, a good idea, of course uh, we try to make a good idea every day, but uh, the most important part is compare um, and various ideas. And uh, to find out what is the important thing in this project, that's a, uh, to get to catch the good question is more important than the form or ideas for us. So we need to keep thinking with uh, those uh, hundreds of models in every project. OK, I will show you two types. Uh, one first one is L-shaped terrace type. So from the common corridor, when you open the door, it's not the room, but the stair balcony. And uh, when, OK, so this is the uh, entrance door. And uh, you can find the second entrance door. So finally, you can enter to a room. But uh, basically, this room is lapped, surrounded by this L-shaped uh, terrace like this. So as you see, all window has a sort of buffer zone between inside and outside like this. We have a, uh, this kind of buffer zone in, in a traditional Japanese house. We call it engawa, a sort of deck, which would make a, a buffer zone between inside and out. So let's say you don't have to put the curtain on the window because there's a sort of a distance gap. It rains. It's OK. <laughs> wow. This is, a, this is a Philippine. <laughs> Take care, run away. And tall terrace type. Uh, this is a, another type. But why it comes from in the middle? OK, I, I will continue. I, instead of to put a small balcony, I put a very tall balcony, like uh, eight meters high, like this. So this is, a, let's say, three stories. One on the one thing is a dining space, bedroom, uh, bathroom, and the bedroom. I put, I stacked uh, ten square meter small room, uh, which is a three stories apartment. This is one apartment. He is living and working in this uh, unit. On the first floor, he is working. And <laughs> and a uh, stairway with a an, uh, an, uh, dining kitchen. Uh, terrace itself is very tiny, like uh, eight square meters or something. And the second floor is only bathroom. I just placed the bathtub and the washing bowl and the toilet on uh, open space like this, so you can enjoy the bath time just beside the terrace. And the uh, top floor is a bedroom. So when you wake up in the morning, you can look down to the garden and the street, like this. 
So, you know, this experience of inside and outside is totally different from normal um, uh, apartment of which has a small balcony, right? Um, thanks to this proportion, very tall, or I explained, L shape. This uh, variation of the shape and proportion of the balcony gave residents um, more dynamic relationship between uh, uh, inside out, or architecture and uh, nature. Okay, so second bridge is about the scales. Already I mentioned about the importance of the scale in my practice, and I will show you the small houses in Japan. Uh, first house is, okay, so my topic is this. Uh, in a school, in a university, uh, we have, a, we got the education, huh? Scale is very important, students. Okay, this is furniture scale. This is a, a room scale. This is a, more yeah, bigger room scale, or this is building scale, or this is urban scale. We, we are trained uh, like this, but in reality, our experience in life is not uh, divided like this, right? It's more continuous. Now I, I'm talking in front of a big audience, uh, but uh, at the same time, I can be focused on this scale, right? This is uh, very continuous and coexists. This is the reality in our life. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we have a mindset how a uh, house has need to have uh, three bedroom and one uh, living room, and the living room need to have a sofa and the television, right? We have a, a sort of mindset, um, but uh, um, we can be open, we can be free from such a mindset. Uh, of course, uh, each room should be functioned. But at the same time, um, with the changing the idea of the scale, um, I have an idea uh, to have a new uh, sense of the experience in a house. I will show you the two examples. One is a very early work of mine. Actually, this is a house of my sister. My sister, is, um, I started my office immediately, so she worried, ha, huh, my brother, he, he, is he okay? She worried about me. So she gave me a commission, um, very nice sister. And she's a, a teacher of elementary school. Elementary school teacher is very, very tough uh, work, a lot of things to do. And actually, uh, it's, is it okay? It's turned off, okay. Um, and her request is very modest. Go, please make a, a working desk for me. Because, uh, yeah, they need to, work in the home, like uh, early in the morning, they, they need to wake up and to, to check the test, a lot of things. So, but he did it on the dining table, which uh, she didn't like it. So she wanted to have a, her own uh, working space. But for sure, I know, I knew her family, they are very good. So I proposed this uh, uh, plan it's uh, like a house, of, they have a courtyard, but uh, this courtyard in the middle, square part, it's uh, four meter by four meter, it's like, uh, like this. Eh? But uh, I put the table in the middle of the house, and uh, this table has a void above, so this is a living dining kitchen, which has a all shape, void in the middle. So from this, uh, okay, <laughs> son room, uh, she has two sons, and older son, and the younger son, and this is their um, study room. But they share this gigantic table in the middle, which is uh, four meter by four meter. This is from her desk. On the left hand, you can see the old brother, old son, and the younger son on the right hand. Actually, they, they, they share this table, but at the same time, their body under the table belong to their own uh, private space. Can you understand? So from a young son space, this space itself is very normal, compact, uh, 1.2.1 uh, meters high. It's very 
uh, normal scale of uh, scale, uh, the room. But when you come close to that chair, uh, he is sitting, immediately you can connect to the uh, dad upper floor or brother opposite side of the table. From the opposite side, you can experience like this and like this. So all the time they share this uh, furniture or room or let's say big environment in the middle of the house. But at the same time, you keep a sort of privacy because uh, you are belong to your private space. And up from upper floor, uh, living space, uh, you can find this uh, such a landscape. Uh, um, they belong to each own uh, private space, but at the same time sharing this uh, gigantic uh, uh, space, which is maybe extraordinary in a small private house. And the second example of the scale is house in Komaza. This is a tiny, tiny house in the center of Tokyo. Um, house for young couple and one daughter. Uh, what I proposed is to make a, actually this is a very, they have a regulation, strict. And a lot of people, a lot of foreigners misunderstand how Japanese architect is very nice because uh, they are very free from the regulation. There's no regulation in Japan. It's not true. A lot of regulation. And uh, actually, it's, it's from the north and from the uh, street. Uh, this roof shape is defined by the regulation uh, in, uh, in uh, Tokyo. So actually, this shape itself is totally the same with uh, neighbors. OK, let's start from this uh, banal shape of the house. It's OK. But we have still a lot of things. OK, from outside, it's, it looks like a banal house. But uh, I put this, uh, what I did is this uh, level of uh, second floor. I made a very high ceiling on the ground, the living space, uh, which has four meters. So in reality, upper floor is very compact, almost like an attic space. I place the study room on the right. Uh, left hand, it's a, a bedroom. Uh, what I did, second thing, is to make uh, this special floor. Um, actually, it's not a floor, it's uh, small beams. Uh, thanks to the skylight on the top, uh, sunlight, air, wind, uh, everything is coming through this uh, floor. So even on the ground floor, you can sense the sunlight uh, climate all the time. Or when, even when you are staying on the upper floor, you can down to the street through, through this uh, uh, floor. I, OK, the client asked me to make a wood house, but uh, it's not interesting to put uh, normal wood. So we make a big research in, uh, in the world. And uh, finally, we found this. This is eucalypts, you know, the tree of koala. Uh, in Australia. Actually, we imported from the Australia. They, this is very tough, hard, um, very interesting material. Almost it looks like a brick instead of wood. So I put uh, this eucalypts. Also, we place the tree of eucalypts on, in front. Uh, so also, this is wood, but at the same time, it has a sort of a heaviness, almost look like a, a stone house. And I checked the gap between the wood for the floor on the second floor with the daughter of the client. And this is an image of the living room. Uh, also, this is a ground floor, which is the same level with the street. Uh, all the time, the sunlight and the wind is coming through from above. And this sun is moving around on the time. I put the floor on the ground floor, which would emphasize a sort of a public feeling on the ground level. And when you look up, you can feel, ha, huh, this is a living room. At the same time, you always sense the scale of building scale, right? You can sense the loose shape because of the transparent floor. 
or on the, from the second floor, you can look down to the living room. But you need to take care not to drop off your iPhone because it's, uh, it might be a big problem. Uh, but even if uh, this is uh, a daughter's space, but uh, you can look down to the street through this uh, gap between the wood. So thanks to this uh, scale and also idea of new type, new experience of the floor, I actually I started from the very banal timber structure, two stories house, but uh, in the end there's a new relationship between uh, up and down. Okay, the third topic is about the landscape. This is a relatively new project. I now we are doing, and also we just finished in last year, both of them in uh, projecting abroad. Actually, I, maybe you notice, instead of to press the object on the place, I always try to make a sort of a new relationship with the landscape. And uh, instead of to make a visible object, um, maybe I try to make a more continuous relationship between a space and landscape. The first project in the house in Spain, uh, near um, three hours by car from the Barcelona. Uh, actually, it's a boundary between Aragon and the Catalan. Uh, there's a river named Arugas River. It, this uh, space, our plot, is facing to this uh, Arugas River. Very beautiful place. And actually, client already built with <coughs> um, the young architects the Pezzo or in uh, Chile and uh, casting on the David of Belgium. And uh, he asked me to make a third building in this area. This is, let's say, summer house. OK, the, there's a large plot. Actually, it's a very cheap uh, uh, area. So he, he owned the, the gigantic area. And uh, OK, go. You can choose the nice place as you want. I walk around for one, two days. And I decided to make this place. This uh, maybe you can notice. Uh, this is a uh, uh, olive trees, very flat, very beautiful, and a very steep cliff, almost like uh, 20 meters. Actually, the client asked me to make a sort of a special experience, and uh, of course, for sure, the Spanish um, government uh, asked me to make a. Uh, to take care of the relation with the beautiful landscape. OK, so with, I don't change this landscape almost anything, uh, but uh, make a, a special experience for the residents. OK, this is a, a movie from above. You can notice on the bottom, laugh, uh, cliff, <coughs> which has uh, 20 meters. You can sense the Pezzo house on the above, left hand. OK, this is a normal house on the ground. But maybe what I'm making is a, a house beside the ground instead of on the ground. How? Actually, they, this is a reference of the very small uh, shrine in Japan, Nageire Do. Very, very, very unique and special uh, shrine. Instead of the uh, um, build on the ground, um, he is staying just beside the ground. This is a concept. OK, so with keeping the landscape of topography of the olive trees, I just put the building beside the cliff, which has uh, 20 meters. And uh, they can get a very nice view. No building at all, but uh, nobody noticed this building because uh, it's totally invisible from above. This is ground floor plan, the level of olive tree, and uh, three meters below. Uh, it's uh, I just keep the t natural topography, and I insert the one concrete floor, which is a, a bedroom, living room, and the guest room on. Uh, Light hand and the uh, swimming pool underneath. This is a section. 
OK, so as a structure, I put the uh, column here and the concrete beam above. And this thin steel floor is hung from uh, the concrete roof. OK, this is uh, the picture from above, um, the olive trees. And you notice the black surface. This is a solar panel. <laughs> solar panel. And solar panel is an entrance canopy like this. And you put the car and going down. And the living room, which is protected by the original topography of the cliff. And from the spiral stairway, you can dive directly into the Okay, no, no, cliff. This is uh, the, the model. I just keep the natural topography, and uh, what I did is to insert to um, a roof and the floor. Very, very simple project. So from above, nobody noticed the building, and I exactly keeping the natural landscape. And uh, this is an image from the uh, cliff side. And uh, the next project is, uh, this is uh, not the uh, architecture. Uh, it's more installation project in uh, Mexico. Uh, in a uh, uh, master of uh, modern architecture in Mexico, Balagan, Louis Balagan, um, his house is, um, I think it's one of the masterpieces of the uh, last century as a house. And uh, the Balagan Foundation asked me to make a sort of a new uh, space in, at the garden of uh, Casa Balagan. This is new program they started. And uh, yeah, Casa Balagan is, uh, I think, uh, um, one of my favorite uh, house, honestly. Uh, I had the occasion uh, to visit there maybe two years ago, and I was totally fascinated to his uh, sense of the proportion and the way of using the color, uh, which is very special in uh, Mexico and uh, very rooted to the Mexican culture. And uh, yeah, Casa Bargan is maybe you have ever seen those pictures, very beautiful uh, stairway, uh, flipping the window, which you can control the sunlight, uh, very beautiful cross window, and this is entrance port, and the gold print in front. But uh, maybe you don't know so much about the garden, uh, which is in front of this house. Actually, it was uh, abandoned for a long time. And uh, three years ago, uh, Mexican architect Albert Karat uh, renovated. In, um, yeah, it's very original uh, design. Um, they keep. Uh, he keeps the idea, design, original design of the Bragan. OK, go. Please make something, the uh, pavilion in this uh, garden. I was asked. Uh, but uh, yeah, the budget, their budget is very limited. Um, with this budget, it's, uh, maybe it's going to be difficult to make a sort of uh, architecture. Also, I think it's a, a little bit strange. This is a garden of Balagan, and the Japanese architect is uh, it made a sort of a temporary room or something. Um, I, I don't like it, the idea. So instead of uh, to make a new architecture, I tried to make a, a kind of extension of his uh, landscape design. OK, so this is uh, uh, Casa Balagan on the left, and the uh, pilot in the forest from my office. But uh, I, I saw some uh, uh, similarity with uh, his uh, um, practice. Uh, all the time, his uh, architecture has a sort of uh, a sense of coexisting with uh, nature. So how we can keep and share uh, as a project? This is one of the topic. And uh, a large number of people uh, is visiting Casa Baradan every day. Um, almost uh, three or 400 people every day. Uh, but unfortunately, there's no resting space or waiting space in front. So all the time, 10 or 20 architecture students is sitting on the street, 
who is waiting for the tour of Casa Baragan, which is not good. So I propose to make a sort of a, a waiting space, maybe bench or something on this garden, which you would walk. Also, after the tour, it's nice to sit on the space and discuss what was this special experience of Casa Baragan, blah, blah, blah. It, it's nice, yeah? OK, Casa Bar uh, the Baragan Foundation was very pleased with my idea. And also, there was a sort of mystery in his garden. Uh, this, is a, this is a garden. And uh, on the edge, uh, there was a, his studio. So his collaborator was walking here. And from the entrance, in each plot, there is a sort of a piazza, a sort of a small place, like one, two, three, third piazza. But uh, this uh, question part, only this part is a kind of a strange bushes. There is no uh, space. OK, so I had a hypothesis. Probably the Baragan wanted to make a piazza also here. And we do it in this project. And in reality, this uh, detail of the stairway, this is his, his uh, stairway and his path. But this uh, corner reminds me how he wanted, he planned to make a, a piazza in this direction on the question part, right? So, OK, so we make uh, something here in this uh, place. But uh, it's not the object. We try to make a continuity with his uh, design. This is the first image of us uh, floating over the bushes. It's like a picnic above the grass. Uh, but it's like a floating experience because uh, this is temporary structure for several months. I visited there and uh, I measured the place of the plants and the height, everything. Also, we needed to find a, a stable a material because uh, Mexico is not uh, sophisticated as a construction in Japan. So we try to find a cheap and stable material. And the cheapest material we found is a galvanized water pipe. It's very stable, the size and the dimension, everything. Also, we expected something, the reflection of the metal. Maybe it would bring a new image of the in uh, nature. This is a picture of the discussion in my office in Tokyo. All the time, the, yeah, now we collaborate with uh, foreigners, like the foreign staff or interns and the Japanese um, um, staff. And every day they prepare their own idea and uh, we continue to discuss every day. And as I explained, the point is not to find out the shape itself, to find the question, what is the important thing in this project? This is a, it takes a time and uh, energy, uh, but uh, it's very fun in the process. And uh, finished. I think it's finished in uh, last November. It still exists. Um, we just placed the uh, galvanized water pipe above the bushes. So uh, 1.3 meters width. This is exactly the same with the uh, original path made by Baragan. And we make a kind of a extension of his path but in a different way, and uh, just above the bushes, almost like a floating carpet. That's why we call it flying carpet. And uh, the shape is uh, defined by the existing plants. So between the plants, just, be, just besides the blue wall painted by Baragan. Also, uh, this is a reference of the Mitola um, uh, heritage in the Mexico, in the middle of Mexico, I visited. Um, maybe you can imagine this kind of pattern is very rooted in the Mexican culture. Uh, I'm totally fascinated with this uh, Mexican pattern. So this, might, this was uh, one of the references in our project. That's why this uh, shape uh, with uh, finding the uh, good relation with the existing tree. Also, this uh, image of the symbol of the Mexican pattern. And uh, with uh, 